module, we'll take a high level look at what cloud computing is and how it can help organizations around the globe. We will first introduce what cloud computing is and what are the advantages of cloud computing. And we'll also look at the different deployment models and types of services and where each one is more beneficial. We will also compare services and technologies from different cloud provider. So by the end of this module, you'll be really be familiar with what cloud computing is in general, and you'll be able to identify in which deployment model or type of cloud a workload best fits in. You need a light, what you do? You simply turn on a light and you simply expect light to work. A back of your consciousness, you know your home should have an electricity connection, but the details of how electricity gets into the light bulb are not important. You don't think about how electricity is being generated in the power plant, how it is traveled through a large network of high voltage transmission lines to your town, going to a substation and eventually making its way to your home. All this complex infrastructure and process is hidden behind a simple act of flipping a switch. Now just imagine if each house has to maintain their own electric power plant, we all have to buy, maintain and run our own power plant infrastructure. Isn't it daunting? Believe it or not, 10-15 years back, we were doing same in terms of company data centers. Yes, I'm serious. Let's see how. If we actually look 10-15 years back, in each company's data center, we had a ton of servers. And each server had a different purpose, maybe running on a different hardware. And even with different operating systems, each new application that you installed, the vendor required that their application run on a dedicated server. Each one of those servers had their own CPU, RAM, and hard drive resources and each one of them needed enough resources for utilization at peak time. But what this did is that on average, most servers were really underutilized and organizations were spending a ton of money on hardware that most of the time was not even used at 10% of its capacity. We then started to implement virtualization, which allowed us to run multiple virtual machine on a virtual host, so we were able to get more usage out of our hardware and cut down space and cooling and of course the cost. In context of our electricity example, it is like a small community of 10-15 houses maintain one power plant. But still, they all together have to maintain a power plant. So virtualization was better than having individual machine for each application but still there were a few disadvantages. We need to invest a lot in the hardware, the high upfront cost. And then we still need to pay for space in the data center. We need to pay for electricity, utility cost for cooling and all other server needs. So virtualization is really a lot better than dedicated hardware, but there are still space for improvement. And this is where cloud computing comes in. Now coming back to our electricity example and we use electricity just as a utility and it has three main benefits. First, you only pay for what you need. For example, we don't pay to our electricity provider some kind of upfront money for how long we possibly use electricity. Instead, we just pay the money against the amount of electricity that we actually use. Second, we don't worry about how or when power plant upgrade to the latest technology. It is all taken care by the government. And finally, we don't have to manage scaling the electricity. For example, people may move in or out of the town or tomorrow maybe your friends, your family, your relatives can come into the town and it is electricity department responsibility to make sure that they generate and provide enough electricity for everyone and all we are assured that our lights will stay on. Now companies were looking for exactly similar solution for their data center and other infrastructure. 
companies were looking for some solution where they can use compute and data storage in somebody else's data center so that they don't have to manage hardware or they don't have to do the maintenance. Companies were looking for some solution where they can easily expand their data storage, computation power and other kind of scale which they need without having to invest capital in hardware. And companies were looking for some solution where they will pay only what they use. And this empowers the small companies to try different ideas and pay only what they use. Luckily, there's a solution to all these problems and that is cloud compute. In the cloud computing, the word cloud is used as a metaphor for the internet. So the phrase cloud computing means a type of internet based computing. In simple terms, I can say that cloud computing is like renting IT resources, just like electricity, where one company is renting a resources like virtual machine, storage, or an applications by cloud provider. The company providing these services is referred to as cloud provider. Some example providers are Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. So for example, Gmail and Google Drive are one type of cloud services provided by Google company, which can provide it free to certain limit, but we can pay and use uh, more storage if we need to. So in simple terms, cloud computing is on demand computing resources delivered to you over the internet. I repeat, cloud computing is on demand computing resources delivered to you over the internet. In the cloud environment, you have cloud provider, which owns the data center and manage all of the hardware like server, networking, and of course, virtualization. And all of those resources are pulled together and then shared to multiple clients that all consume the same hardware. So these clients do not need to know that on what servers they run on or how many servers their different environments are running on. They simply consume a service and the cloud provider is the one making sure that there are enough shared resources to handle everything. In the cloud environment, users simply select what services they want to use with each service having a price per user or per minute of utilization of that specific resource. So let's learn some of the top benefits of cloud computing. With cloud computing, you don't have to buy expensive hardware. You don't have to buy software licenses. You don't have to set up and run on-site data centers. You don't have to maintain the racks of servers, the round of clock electricity for power and cooling, the IT experts for managing the infrastructure. And now because there is no wait for computing resources, you don't have to order a physical server and wait weeks for it to be delivered and installed. You could instead uh, through your browser ask for virtual machine or database or something, any resource and have them available within few minutes. In a cloud model, services are built on demand by the minute, by the hour or even by the second depending on what services you are using. This on-demand billing allows organizations to create resources when needed and then stop paying for them when they don't need them anymore. Most cloud computing services are provided on-demand resources. So even vast amount of computing resources can be provisioned in minutes. Typically, with just a few mouse clicks, giving businesses a lot of flexibility and taking the pressure off for capacity planning. You can increase or decrease the resources and services used based on the demand and workload at any given time. As your workload changes due to a spike or drop in demand, a cloud computing system can compensate by automatically adding or removing resources. No maintenance. When you use the cloud, you are able to focus on what actually matters building and deploying applications. Cloud usage eliminates the burden of maintaining software patches, hardware setup, upgrades, and other IT management tasks. 
All of this is automatically done for you to ensure you are using the latest and greatest tools to run your business. For example, if a disk fail, the disk will be replaced by the cloud provider. If a new hardware update becomes available, you don't have to go through the process of replacing your hardware. The cloud provider will ensure that the hardware updates are made available to you automatically. Self-service. And then the cloud is self-service, meaning there is a no or there's a reduced need for IT experts. So let's say that I need a brand new web server and I'm going to run it in the cloud. Now, I don't have to go to talk to my IT manager. I don't have to talk to a server admin. He doesn't have to speculate about the server, order it from, let's say, HP or Dell and get the server, rack it, stack it and hook it up with the UPS, connect it with the network, install the operating system, install the web servers, install the database and then maintain and upgrade it forever. With the cloud, I don't need any of those people. I don't need to consume their time which cost the company money. I just simply, with a few mouse click, provision a web server and I'm able to run my application that I need to run. I put it on my credit card, I pay a few cents per minute to consume it, for example, and I can scale up, add as many more web servers as I need. And when I don't need them, I can simply delete them and take them off my account. Next is a global. Cloud providers have data centers located in various regions all over the globe. This gives you a local presence close to your customers to give them the best response time possible no matter where in the world they are and you can replicate to different regions. New solutions possible. You don't have to buy servers and hope that whatever you're doing, your projects or your startup or whatever is has to be successful. You need not make that large upfront investment before you can do things. Instead, you rent what you need and if the project succeeds, great. And if it doesn't, just shut things down and stop paying. This lower financial risk for new projects means that you could do more innovation. You can take more chances because you're spending less on your attempts. That's a big win. And it's a big reason why cloud platforms have helped create a boom in IT startups that we have seen in the last few years. So cloud computing makes running a business easier. It's a cost effective, it's a scalable, it's a elastic, it's current, it's reliable, it's secure. And this means you are able to spend more time on what matters and less time the managing and underlying details. Thank you. Now that we have looked at what the cloud is and advantages of cloud, let's learn what are the different types of uh, cloud deployment models. A cloud deployment model defines where your data is stored and how your customers interact with it. How do they get to it and where do the applications run? So we have three different types, public, private and hybrid. The first one, and probably the most popular one is the public cloud. In this case, we have no local hardware to manage or keep up to date. Everything runs on your cloud provider's hardware. You simply use your browser and access service and share the same hardware, storage and network devices with other organizations. So in this case, your service provider provides the maintenance and you don't have to worry about it. You have near unlimited scalability. On-demand resources are available to meet your business needs. High reliability, a vast network of servers ensure against failure. Not all scenarios fit the public cloud. Here are some disadvantages to think about. Less control, you don't own the hardware or services and cannot manage them as you may want to. So for example, you want to deploy a web application or a blog site on hardware and resources that are owned by a cloud provider. Using a public cloud in this scenario allows cloud users to get their website or blog up quickly. And then focus on maintaining the site without having to worry about the purchasing or managing or maintaining the hardware on which it runs. 
private cloud. This is very close to traditional data center model we always had. In a private cloud, you create a cloud environment in your own data center and provide self-service access to compute resources to users in your organization. This offers a simulation of a public cloud to your user, but you remain completely responsible for the purchase and maintenance of the hardware and software services you provide. This approach has several advantages. First of all, there is no legal obligation. You can ensure the configuration can support any scenario or legal requirements. You are in complete control. You have control and responsibility over the security. Private clouds uh, can meet a strict security compliance. And some of the reasons uh, team move away from the cloud, the private cloud are infrastructure cost. You have some initial setup cost and must purchase the hardware for setup and maintenance. Difficult to scalable and owning the equipments limit the agility. To scale, you must buy, install, and set up new hardware. IT skills. Private cloud requires IT skills and expertise that's hard to come by. A use case scenario for a private cloud would be when an organization has data that cannot be put into the public cloud, perhaps for legal reasons, an example scenario may be where the government policy requires specific data to be kept in country or privately. A private cloud can provide cloud functionality to external customers as well, or to specific internal departments such as accounting or human resources. Next up, we have the hybrid cloud, which is the combination of both the public and the private cloud with automation and orchestration between the two. Hybrid cloud allowing you to run your applications in the most appropriate location. For example, you could host a website in the public cloud and link it to highly secure database hosted in your private cloud or in on-premises data center. So some of the advantages of a hybrid cloud are you can use your own equipment to meet security, compliance or legal scenarios where you need to completely control the environment and some concerns you'll need to watch out for are, it can be more expensive than selecting one deployment model since it involves some upfront cost and it can be more complicated to set up and manage. This is useful when you have some things that cannot be put in the cloud, maybe for legal reason. For example, you may have some specific pieces of data that cannot be exposed publicly which needs to be held in your private data center. Another example is one or more applications that run on old hardware that can't be updated. In this case, you can keep the old systems running locally and connected to the public cloud for authorization or storage. Now that we have looked at the types of deployment models, there are also different types of computing services. The three main ones are infrastructure as a service, or IaaS, Platform as a Service, or PaaS, and Software as a Service, or SaaS. Let's take a look at what the differences are. What really differs between the deployment models is how much you manage versus how much vendor manages. Let's understand this with an example. Let's compare the difference between our own car, rental or leased car, taxi, and bus. This is exactly the difference between IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS. Traditionally, on-premises is likable to owning your own car. You manage everything from top to toe, from registering for the car, for maintenance, for upgrades, everything. IaaS is similar to renting a car. When you rent a car, you choose what to do with it. However, the car does not belong to you. And if you feel like uh, an upgrade or change the car, you can do so very easily. Pass is like uh, taking a taxi or Uber drive. You don't drive the vehicle yourself, but you still need to navigate and instruct the driver what to do. SaaS is like taking a bus. Buses have assigned routes and all you have to do is just hop into it and just take a ride. Knowing that you will reach your final destination 
because the driver knows what to do. Now let's have a contrast of this with cloud services. Let's start with on-premises where it's pretty easy. You are the one that manages everything from storage to the data center to networking or virtualization and application, everything. And then we have infrastructure as a service, which is the most uh, flexible category of cloud services. This is really where you get provided the bare infrastructure you need to create your own computing environment. Instead of buying hardware with IaaS, you rent the hardware. Think about virtual machine, hard drive storage space, networking and IP addresses, and those sort of things. So you can build an environment similar to what you have maybe built on your own data center or with the hosting provider. It aims to give you complete control over the hardware. It is like leasing a car or renting a car. The car, you have the complete control on the car, but still you don't own the car. And then platform as a service provides a framework for developers that it can build upon and use to create or test and deploy customized applications. The goal of PaaS is to help you create an application quickly without managing the underlying infrastructure. All server storage networking is managed by the cloud provider while developer maintains the management of application. So you don't have to worry about the patching or upgrade. Everything will be taken care of by the Microsoft or the cloud provider. All you have to focus is to how to develop and manage my application. It is like uh, taking an Uber or taxi. You don't have to think about uh, the registration of the car or the car have the proper gas and uh, licenses and all. You focus where you want to go. You just let driver know, you get the navigation. You help driver to navigate to your destination. You don't have to think about the car itself. And our last option is software as a service in which you simply enjoy the service. Pay a fees, but you don't manage anything at all. Everything is managed by the vendor. SaaS is software that is centrally hosted and managed for the end customer. It is usually based on an architecture where one version of the application is used for all the customers and licenses through a monthly or annual subscription. A majority of software as a service applications are run directly through the web browsers and do not require any downloads or installation in the client side. The most common example are things like the Gmail, where that's a Gmail or Microsoft Exchange in Office 365. So Gmail is like a software which is provided by the Microsoft. You can just use a browser and access that software. You cannot change it. You can just customize it according to your need and feel, but you cannot change the functionality of the Gmail. That is fixed. That is something which is designed and developed for everyone. It is like taking a bus. You cannot change the route. You can just get into the bus, pay for the ticket and wherever bus is going, you can just go there. It may be close to your office. It may be a little far to your office, but you cannot change the route of the bus. And then after software as a service and infrastructure as a service and platform as a service, if you look out on the internet, you will find many other forms of cloud computing. In fact, I'm confident you'll find just about everything out there in some shape or form as a service. For example, you will find desktop as a service where you can access virtual desktop in the cloud. You will find the backup as a service where you can utilize backup service to protect your data either on or off premises. You will find the storage as a service where you can simply store data out there in the cloud. There are many different forms of cloud computing, but SaaS, IaaS and PaaS typically encompass most everything out there. Though keep an eye out for these other types of cloud computing or other branding methods, if you will, to utilize this uh, something as a service marketing terminology. Thank you. Companies who provide the hardware and services in cloud are called cloud provider. At this time, we have three main leading cloud providers, AWS or Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform. Let's compare some of the services provided by them. 
So let's take an example of Amazon Web Services. AWS was the first real cloud platform and it offers technology in all the areas I have just talked about. For IaaS, for example, Amazon Web Services offer Elastic Compute Cloud, EC2, or for PaaS, there's a primary service is Elastic Beanstalk. And for containers as a service, they offer the Elastic Kubernetes service, EKS. As I mentioned earlier, all of the leading cloud platforms today support Kubernetes for working with containers. They also offer serverless computing, functions as a service with a service called Lambda. For data, Amazon Object Storage Technology is S3, the simple storage service. The primary managed relational service is RDS, the relational database service. And the primary NoSQL technology as a service is DynamoDB, although there are others as well. Another major player in the world for public cloud platform is Microsoft Azure. Azure also offers technologies in all the categories I have introduced so far. Their IaaS technology is called Virtual Machines and the primary pass offering is App Service. For containers, Microsoft provides Azure Kubernetes Service, AKS. And for serverless computing, they have got Azure Functions. For object storage, Azure has blobs. For relational service, they have got SQL Server. And for NoSQL, there are various options with the Cosmos DB as perhaps the most visible one. The third major vendor in this market is Google with Google Cloud Platform. For IaaS, Google offers Compute Engine. For PaaS, Google offers App Engine. For containers, Google support Kubernetes Engine. And for serverless computing, function as a service, they offer cloud functions. For data, Google offers a cloud storage for object storage, cloud SQL as a managed relational service, and cloud Bigtable for a managed NoSQL technology. Now it is worth noting here that all three of the major cloud platform vendors have simple technology sets. This is no surprise. It's uh, what commonly happens as the markets mature. Just a few years ago, these three offerings were much more different from each other. But today they have all worked out with the market. And so we have seen this uh, convergence of uh, service is. That's why it is possible to think about the core cloud platform service in this simple grid like this. The three main cloud platforms, Amazon Web Service, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform get most of the attention in this area. But there are others and they are worth mentioning. For example, Alibaba Cloud offers IaaS, Object Storage, Kubernetes, and a lot more. They offer a full suite of cloud service and they are dominant player in China in particular. IBM Cloud also offers IaaS, Object Storage, Kubernetes, and a lot of other services. Interestingly, they also offer bare metal servers. You could actually rent just raw hardware from them. And there are a lot more. For example, many traditional hosters now offer some cloud services. The challenge though is that uh, they don't have the scale of the market leaders. And so it's uh, tough for them to compete in uh, price and other areas. The key idea to keep in mind is that while the big three have the majority of the market share today, there are plenty of other small vendors in this market as well. Before finishing up this module, let's quickly review what we have learned so far. We have done an uh, introduction to cloud computing which allows organizations to consume computing services as a utility. The cloud brings us multiple benefits such as rapid elasticity of resources when needed. And since uh, services are billed per second, minute or hour, depending on the service, you can pay for services only when you need it and also reduce that upfront cost of computer hardware. We have also looked at the different types of computer deployment model, the public, private, and hybrid. 
as well as the different types of service offering uh, such as the infrastructure, platform, and software as a service. This is it for the introduction module where we